Manowaker Waker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast is supported by patrons on Patreon. To find out more or to add your support for as little as a dollar a month, visit patreon.com slash manowaker. Welcome to Manowaker Studios Flash Fiction Podcast. I'm C.B. Drogi. This week, Story of a Door. Written by Mohammed al Rotayan, translated from Arabic by Isam M. al Jassim. I don't remember the past in any particular way. I don't have a family tree outlining my lineage, and I don't know from which tree I came. I barely remember the scent of the lumberjack's fingers as they worked to outline my final liniments. I thought I would be a chair, a cupboard, a table, or a window. I never thought I would be a door. By my good fortune, I was made the main door of this small rural home. In the beginning, I looked at its dwellers with suspicion. The sound of little feet scared me, because the young daughter, Sarah, often grabbed my latch violently and made my limbs jerk when she shut me. Only the lady of the house reproached Sarah's rude behavior. The father laughed loudly at the pampered girl's impish act. I felt that there was a sort of relationship began to sprout between me and the lady. Her touch seemed different. I felt warm and safe when she opened and shut me. She put some of her soft touches upon me from the inside, like sticking small artistic pictures and from the outside when she adorned me with some flowers she'd picked from their small garden. I always convinced myself that she put these flowers up for me, not for the guests. How I hate boring guests and their stupid knocks. But the ladies' visitors were dear to my heart, even if their knocks were sometimes violent. Years passed, and I felt more attached to this family. I witnessed the lady growing older, and Sarah sloughed her childish fashion, turning into a pretty young girl. But on a sad and somber day, death snatched the master. Not long after that, Sarah left to pursue her college studies in a distant city. We were alone, the lady and I. I observed how gradually her strength weakened and her body lost vigor. Each day I longed impatiently for her touch, when she opened me in the morning. It was as if this touch was her way of saying good morning to me. At one point, she took her coffee nearby me. She would draw up a wooden chair and sit on the porch. How I envied the chair, wishing I had been made a chair instead of a door. I believe she was thinking of Sarah and her late husband at these moments. Although I was left ajar, I kept looking at her. On winter nights she sat in the living room reading a book. I was excited to be near her. Despite the blizzard, rain, and cold air hitting me from the outside, I sensed warmth and happiness from the inside. During those years, I do not remember exactly, because my memory deteriorated around that time, strangers knocked on me rather strenuously. After a series of strong blows, they split me wide open. There were murmurs and confused and intangible arguments. They entered the rooms of the house and began searching. A few minutes passed, then they left the house, carrying the lady on a stretcher. She left without looking back or touching me. She didn't even say goodbye. Years passed, and no one knocked on me or put flowers on my chest. I got older and developed an annoying squeaking sound. My joints weakened, and mites and mold wore out my limbs. Erosion crept upon me due to the loneliness and the seasonal changes. On a cold spring morning, a lady, accompanied by a young man, taller and younger than her, turned up. I recognized her features. I knew the rhythm of their paces as they approached. Once she touched me, I crumbled to the ground. The things around me, thought I had tumbled because of my rusted hinges or because my joints had been gnawed. No, it was because I felt that soft touch. It was the same touch of the lady of the house. Why not hers? 
It was her daughter Sarah, who had come with her young son to visit the forsaken family home. After the pair took a brief turn round the house, a strong cold draft blew in. The young man gathered some papers strewn about and threw them into the old fireplace to get some heat. He looked around, then headed for me. He shattered my limbs and cast them into the fire. This has been Story of a Door, written by Mohammed Al-Rotayan and translated by Isam M. al -Jassim. For more information about Manawaker Studios' other projects, including books and games, visit manawaker.com, which is also where you should go to learn more about the authors featured on this podcast or to get details about submitting a story. The Flash Fiction Podcast theme song is by Kevin McLeod. Manawaker Studios' director of Dice is Ben Baston. I'm C.B. Drogi. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook at C-B-D-R-O-E-G-E. -E. Thanks for listening. On the next installment of Manawaker Studios' Flash Fiction Podcast, he'd shivered as she'd kissed him. They'd almost been late for her co-worker's wedding. It had been worth it. He put the tie against his face and breathed in. Nothing. Not even a trace of her perfume remained. <laughs>